This is a little demo about frustrated total internal reflection. I love the name of this, and it's very general. It applies to any kind of wave phenomenon, including quantum mechanical waves. So to start out with, we know that we are going to have refraction if we have waves coming from a medium with one speed and traveling into a medium with another speed. And in this case, I'm going to have electromagnetic waves traveling from paraffin into air. So if I have a wave front traveling in and hitting this interface, and it travels faster in the second medium, it's going to refract away from the normal. Paraffin has an index of refraction equal to 1.44. And the index of refraction is defined as the speed of the wave in a vacuum over the speed of the wave in the medium. So the fact that the index of refraction is 1.44 means that the speed of these electromagnetic waves in paraffin is roughly two-thirds the speed in a vacuum or in air. So this wave front is going to refract away from the normal. And if we increase the size of this angle a little bit, we're going to hit an angle where that refracted ray would travel right along the interface. That's called the critical angle. But instead of actually traveling along the interface, it turns out that the energy reflects off of the interface entirely. So that 100% of the energy that impacts this interface reflects back off at an angle of reflection equal to the angle of incidence. And there is no refraction of the energy into the second medium. This is called total internal reflection. And you might be familiar with it if you've ever gone into a swimming pool and you've looked out of the swimming pool. You'll notice that if you look at, at steep angle straight up, you'll be able to see out of the pool. But if you are trying to look at a very small angle relative to the interface, you'll just see a reflection off the surface. That's an example of total internal reflection. So we can actually calculate what this critical angle is. We use Snell's law. And Snell's law, written in terms of the angle relative to the normal, is n1 sine theta 1 is n2 sine theta 2. And in this case, the medium that the waves are coming from is the slower one, where the index of refraction is 1.44. So 1.44 sine the critical angle, that equals 1 because the index of refraction of air is 1. And if we want that wave to come right along the interface, that's a 90 degree angle. Sine of 90 degrees is 1. I solve that for the critical angle, and I find out that the critical angle is 44 degrees. So that means that if the electromagnetic wave comes in at an angle of 44 degrees or greater, it's going to suffer total internal reflection. So this is the setup. I have paraffin. I have paraffin prisms. And these are right isosceles triangles, two prisms. And I'm producing the electromagnetic wave with this microwave transmitter. It has a wavelength of 2.8 centimeters. And you can see that it's got a horn transmitter. And I can choose to modulate this signal. I can choose to modulate it at 100 hertz, a kilohertz, 100 kilohertz. And the reason we're doing that is because we're going to pick the signal up with a microwave receiver and it converts the electromagnetic wave to a sound wave so that we can actually hear what the output is. So I'm going to use this microwave transmitter to uh, have an electromagnetic wave impact the surface of this prism. And I'm going to have it come in normal to the surface. So because of the uh, fact that I've got a different material 
that the wave is coming into, some of that energy is going to be reflected back, but some of the energy will go into the prism, and then because it's an isosceles triangle, I know that this angle is 45 degrees, this angle is 45 degrees, and the angle that that electromagnetic wave impacts the interface at is going to be 45 degrees as well. Well, 45 degrees is greater than the critical angle, and so we expect to get total internal reflection in this prism as that wave impacts through the paraffin and strikes the opposite side. So I'm going to turn on the transmitter and I'm going to modulate it at a kilohertz because that's a, a frequency which we can hear very easily. And you can hear a little bit of signal here. I'm going to get some diffraction of that electromagnetic energy around the prism as well. But listen carefully to the change in the signal when I bring the receiver out in this direction where I'm getting that total uh, internal reflection coming back. You hear the difference in the sound level. So very little of that energy is able to uh, reach the receiver when I just have the one prism here. Now I'm going to take a second prism and I'm going to bring it close to the first one, still leaving a bit of a gap. And you can already hear that the signal is starting to increase a little bit. The closer I bring those two prisms together, I'm not letting the faces touch, but the closer I bring them together, the stronger the signal gets. Now I'm going to take the receiver and bring it over to the other side, and you can see that the signal is smaller than it was before. So much more of the energy is able to pass through even though we're coming in at the angle of at an angle greater than the critical angle that energy is able to jump across that gap that's frustrated internal reflection and that's indicated in this diagram right here where when I bring the second prism closer now instead of the energy reflecting off of the surface, it's able to jump across the gap and pass through the second prism.